every one welcome back to my youtube channel if you have not already please like and subscribe to my youtube channel so a little bit of a update before we enter today's session I am still going to be making the questions and answers video but I need at least 5 questions before I can make a full video. However I will be answering one question today as I don't like people waiting for long. So please ask questions or suggest content that you want to see I will be very delighted to interact with my viewers and subscribers. Today we are going to answer one question that I received last week. And then we are going to be talking about how I overcome certain obstacles, for example, how I sharpen a pencil or draw a line, things like that. I will talk about how I do my shading because that is very important for me to share that with you. Okay, so we have a question from Jar299. Welcome to the channel. And Jar question is, can I walk at all? Maybe with a walker. Also they asked I would love to hear your voice could you answer one or two questions with your voice. Well, I can walk with a walker but as I am getting older it is harder to use my walker so I use my electric wheelchair which I use full time. When I was born my feet was bent in woods which is called club foot. When I was two years old, doctors told us that I would not be able to walk or to have an operation to straighten my feet out. Because I was so young. But however, Back in 2009-2010 my physio at that the time said that I am eligible for the operation and that it will benefit me in the long run. So, my parents booked me in for the surgery I was under for 5 or 6 hours. About a year later I learned how to stand and transfer and to walk in my walker. Nowadays I find it hard to use my walker because my muscles get tired very easily. I don't know if anybody can relate to this but as I am getting older, I am finding that I am getting back and arm pain and I want to ask does anyone else in their mid-twenties and have cerebral palsy get these symptoms. In terms of your other question Jar, yes, I can communicate with my voice and I have done a few videos with just my own voice. But I do prefer using my talking with my speech app simply because I don't have clear speech and sometimes people don't understand me especially when it comes to videos or video calling. This is why I use my speech app, so I can put my points across and so people understand me clearly. Also, so I don't have repeat myself all the time. I hope this answers your questions JAR 229. And if anyone would like to ask anything or has any questions, please don't be afraid to ask them. We are now going to be moving on to how I overcome certain obstacles in my life of being an artist. Number one is sharpening a pencil. Normally I get pencils with the art kits that I buy of Amazon so I have about a thousand floating around my flat. But if I really needed to sharpen a pencil, I do have a sharpener that clamps onto the table and I just turn the handle round and that's how I do it. If I am in a position where I cannot find my sharper or in a rush or anything, I would just ask someone kindly to help me sharpen the pencil for me. Number 2 is using a rubber to erase any mistakes in my drawings. I am fairly normally a careful and neat artist when it comes to my drawings and sketching. Simply because I do find it very difficult to hold and grip the rubber and not to rub out the work which does not need rubbing out. If I do need to rub out a piece of artwork I try very hard to focus very carefully on the bit that needs getting rid of. Number 3 is blending and holding the stump I always have used the tip of the blending stump until recently, when I learned from another artist that the side of the stump tip is better for using. But I find it very hard to hold the tip because I can't grip it that well, whereas the body of the stump is more easier too. Hold for myself. However, this is not ideal for blending or shading because I am pressing on the stump too hard it is makes it very dark when I need to lightly shade areas of my drawing. So. I am trying to learn ways how to hold the tip and what works for me. Number 4 is how I do my shading as I mentioned before that I use the blending stump, 
This is because I find it harder to do it with my fingers and I hate getting my hands dirty. Anyway, that is not all the reasons why. The other reason is because I personally I find that if you shade with the blending it is neater and tidier if you get it right. But you have to be very careful when you are doing this. My way is that I start from the bottom and work my way up to the top and then I shade from side to side. Number 5 is getting my camera in the correct position. When I started my YouTube channel, I was using my phone on a tripod to film my videos. But I found it very hard to get the right position and the angle of the camera, this is one of the reasons why I gave up. And so now I use my laptop to film my videos because I can get the best angle and position of the camera. Also, I don't have to ask someone to help me set up if I use my laptop, I don't have to rely on anybody I can get on and do it. Number 6 is getting my materials out from where I store them. I usually have my materials in a drawer which is where I can easily get them out of. If they are in a box high up then I would ask someone to bring them down for me. However, where I used to live I had a storage drawer tower which I kept next to my table, so I could get things in and out easily independently. Thank you everyone for watching, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you all soon. Thank you.